In this video, I'm going to teach you how to read an American Mahjong card. American Mahjong is very different than Asian versions. One of the big differences is that players use a card that's published on an annual basis. The rules of the game and even the conventions of the blocks of tiles that you play with stay the same. Even the strategies stay the same. It's just the hands themselves change from year to year and card to card. Here's an example card. You can see that there are colors, letters, and numbers. We're going to demystify that in this video. The first thing that I want you to know is that the cards are going to be published on an annual basis. Some are released in January for the National Mahjong League, which is the flagship for American Mahjong. Their release cycle is every April. So at the end of March, the cards are in the mail and it can take up to three weeks to get your card. So try to be patient. There's always a ruckus every year when people are waiting for their cards because there are so many that are delivered around the nation and even internationally that sometimes it takes a little while. So if you order your card, just know that you will get it eventually. There are several ways that you can buy an American Mahjong card. You can go to your local synagogue. You can go to your local Hadassah chapter there are also some online stores that sell the cards or even local Jewish gift shops may have cards. The best way, in my opinion, to order the National Mahjong League card is through their website, nationalmahjongleague.org. That's how I order mine every year. And one of the benefits of ordering your card through the league is that you become a member of their mailing list and you get a newsletter that's sent out I believe in January and that mailing list has news for the community and FAQs frequently asked questions from the community and a lot of times rules are confirmed clarified or corrected in those newsletters next I want to talk about the card itself it's a three panel card on the front you have the year it was released. And then on the back of the card, you're going to have some high level rules. This is a complex game. So a lot of the rules are not going to be on the card because there's limited space there. So they have basically the payout and penalties at the very top on the first panel and then definitions. For example, what is a Pung? What is a Kong? What is a Quint? And then they're going to have some instructions on game setup. After game setup is an explanation of how the Charleston works. So if you forget how to do the Charleston, it's written on the back of the card. Also, there's some information on the back of the card about handling jokers. Next on the card is about picking from the wall, primarily not picking ahead. This was a practice that was done years and years ago, but it's not uh, part of the game anymore. So don't pick ahead. And that's a reminder to everyone on the back of the card. Don't pick ahead. Also claiming discarded tiles and what the process is for that is on the back of the card. There's also some information about how to handle situations when discards are miscalled. So that information is on the back of the card in the middle panel. Also on the middle panel is how to handle it when someone has a false mahjong or mahjong in error. I highly recommend that you purchase a book published by the National Mahjong League called Mahjong Made Easy. I'll leave a link below the video to where you can buy it. I created a mock American Mahjong card for use with this lesson playlist. This card was created to support any given year. 
As you can see under the year category, there's a block with four Ys. So this mock card can be used no matter what year it is. Also, there are examples of uses with single tiles, pairs, blocks of tiles with singles in them like the year and news, northeast, west, and south. So I've tried to create hands that will apply no matter what year it is and what card you are using. Now there could be some that won't be covered because I can't predict the future. So just know that when you learn to read one American Mahjong card, you can apply all those conventions to any other American Mahjong card because they follow the same conventions, the same colors, letters, numbers. They separate blocks of tiles with a space. You have singles, pairs, pungs, kongs, quints, maybe even sextets, which is six of a kind. So just know that you do not have to relearn the game. The game stays the same year to year. It's just that the hands themselves change from year to year and card to card. We're going to talk about the inside of the card at a very high level, and then we're going to drill down to the detail. So if you have any questions by the end of the video, just write them in the comments section below. Let's start with the year. In the year category, you're going to have a mixture of year tiles and winds and dragons. And of course, flowers may be in there as well. For the year, in this mock card, I have a block of four Ys. So any year could be used, 2018, for example, for this year. So you're gonna need a two, a white dragon, a one, and an eight. For other years, you may need 2020, let's say, 2020, or two white dragon, two white dragon, because the white dragon is used as a zero. So for the year category, you'll need year tiles, dragons, flowers, and maybe winds. So one of the interesting things about the year category is that a lot of times you can switch depending on the year to the evens category, the consecutive run category, or even like numbers. So just look at the patterns in the year and then as you're picking and discarding for that particular category, you may be able to leverage the most of your tiles and switch to another category based on the tiles that you're getting. But the year category a lot of times can be played alongside the 2468 category like numbers as well as consecutive run. Okay, we're gonna go to the next category. The 2468 category. In the 2468 category, you'll see that you need typically flowers and dragons. Sometimes news might be in there. In this mock card, I put news in there. So one thing that you'll see missing here are odd tiles. There are no odd numbered tiles. So while you're playing in the 2468 category, you won't need to hold any odd tiles. The only reason why you might wanna hold an odd tile is just in case you wanna to switch to a consecutive run hand instead or the consecutive run category as a whole. So if you're working on a 2468 hand and you start getting lots of sevens, you might consider switching to consecutive run using six, seven, eight, because you have sixes and eights from the 2468 category with those sevens, you might be able to switch to consecutive run. So sometimes for 2468, you can switch to a consecutive run hand. Depending on the tiles you get, gotta stay flexible. So let's talk about the next category, like numbers. In the like number category, you see that the number one represents the like number. It doesn't matter what number it is, as long as those blocks are the same number. So you see ones on the card, but you can use twos or sevens. It doesn't matter as long as those blocks of numbered tiles are the same tile, that would be valid for a like number hand. The next category is math play. 
do not take this category literally. We're not going to be doing any kind of multiplication here. This is just kind of a conceptual. So if you look at the first hand, we need four flowers, four twos, four eights, and a one and a zero. And the idea here is that two plus eight equals 10. So you can see the next one, three plus seven equals 10, six plus four equals 10, nine plus one equals 10. That's the idea, not to be taken literally. In years past, there have been formulas where the blocks of tiles equal seven or 11 and even 13. So just know that the addition category or the math play category is going to be some kind of a play on math. They may even make it multiplication or subtraction as in years past. The next category is going to take us to the middle panel. The top is the quint category. This is where you have hands with five of a kind and you're gonna need jokers for those. A good guideline for quints is that you start with three jokers. If you don't have jokers, it's gonna be a long shot to force a quint. But if you have three jokers and multiples in your hand, you might consider a quint. With quints, you're gonna have one or two quints with pairs, maybe a uh, pong, kong, something like that. So it's going to change, but in total, you'll have 14 tiles. So it really depends on the combination as to how many quints there'll be. And of course, how many jokers were, are gonna be handy or required to complete that particular hand. The next category is consecutive run. This is the easiest category on the card. So if you feel overwhelmed starting out, you might focus on this category for a while. I would not play this as your only category because you're, you're really going to be missing out on a lot of other fun hands to play. But this particular category is the most flexible. Because there are three suits numbered one through nine, there are many more tiles for consecutive run to provide flexibility than any other category on the card. For example, two, four, six, eight. There's only four numbers there to work with. Three, six, nine, three numbers. One, three, five, seven, nine, five numbers. But with consecutive run, you have a run of nine and you can work with any number. So for example, if you look at the consecutive run category, these examples all start with the number one, but you can start at any number up to nine, of course, because you wanna make sure that your ending number is nine. You cannot go all the way back to a one. So for example, if you look at the second hand down, the example is one, two, three, four, but you can have any four consecutive numbers. So you can use six, seven, eight, nine for that particular hand and so on. This is the most flexible category. If you ever find that you're on a losing streak, focus on consecutive run until you break that streak. You might find some encouragement with that. The next category is one, three, five, seven, nine. I call this odds. In the odds category, there are typically one, two, or three hands that are gonna span the whole one, three, five, seven, nine range. In this mock card, the first hand does that and the second from the bottom. So in this mock card, only two hands use one, three, five, seven, nine. All the other hands are either going to be one, three, five, or five, seven, nine. And of course you may have jokers and dragons in there as well. But the idea is that if you don't have every one, three, five, seven, nine represented and you have mostly one, three, five or five, seven, nine, you can focus on just those little numbers or big numbers and have lots of flexibility. So I like to call those little odds or big odds and that can help you whittle down your options and focus on either one, three, five, seven, nine as a whole range or little odds or big odds. The nice thing about odds also is that you can switch to 
consecutive run depending on the tiles that you get if you just fill a gap so if you for example are playing one three five seven nine and you get a bunch of twos and fours you might be able to switch to consecutive run one two three four five because you've got the one three five so you could also potentially switch to three six nine depending on the numbers that you get to fill those gaps so think about that while you're playing this category if you end up getting tiles that heavily weigh into another category consecutive run is a good switch and so is three six nine the next category takes us into the right panel of the card this is the winds and dragons category this category is primarily going to include winds dragons and flowers but can also include number tiles in the mock card the two hands second from the second and third from the bottom have north and south with odds and east and west with evens and the numbers are like numbers so just keep that in mind they're primarily going to be winds and dragons but you could have instances where you're going to have number tiles in there the next category is three six nine I think this is one of the more challenging categories because there are only three numbers to work with. There are, are many hands that you can play, but you're only using three numbers. So if I have a lot of multiples with three, six, nine, I might go for it, uh, but there's not a whole lot of flexibility here. You do have some hands with flowers and dragons as well, so keep that in mind when you play three, six, nine. Finally, we have the singles and pairs category. The singles and pairs category has no jokers, so you can never use a joker with singles and pairs. In the singles and pairs category, you'll see too that the values are higher, and that's because they're harder to get. Another interesting thing about the singles and pairs category is that each hand follows a category on the card so the first hand for example is from the winds and dragons category or the like number category the second hand is from the 2468 category evens the third category is from 13579 category or odds the next category is from the consecutive run category and then next we have 369 and finally the year category so each one of the categories on the card is represented in the singles and pairs category so if you're playing a single and pair hand and for whatever reason you're not able to complete it let's say somebody has a kong of a tile that you needed as a single tile or even a pair you can switch that hand to its corresponding category so for example let's say that I'm playing the consecutive run pair hand the fourth one down one two three four five six seven in one suit and let's say I'm working on tiles two through eight and somebody has an exposure with all the threes a Kong of threes so I have no threes I can switch to maybe the 2468 category then because I'll have no way to get those threes at that point. So just remember when you're playing singles and pairs, if that hand is no longer viable, you can switch to whatever category that fits the tiles in your hand. If you have any questions about the categories, write them in the comment section below. But these are typically the same categories year after year for the National Mahjong League. Now, other cards may have different categories, but the concepts are going to be very similar or the same. The next thing we're going to cover is the color code. For flowers and winds, since they are interchangeable, they are always going to be blue. You can see some examples here. News north east west and south all blue next we have two flowers north red dragon and south so the flowers and the two winds are blue and then the dragon is a different color same thing with the next hand flowers east green west the flowers and the winds are blue and then we have north and south with ones 
the winds are blue and then the suited tiles are going to be three different suits, three different colors. The winds though, always blue. Flowers and winds will always be blue and they're interchangeable with suits. If you have a hand with one color, one color means one suit. So these are all examples from the mock card where you're going to be working with one suit. In the very last example, we have two flowers and then pairs in one suit with the matching dragon. Because the dragon matches, it's considered one suit. Two colors means two suits. Here we have examples of this. You decide what the suits are. The one suit hands are easy because you know you just need one suit. But when you get into mixed suits, you get to decide what those suits are. So for example, the first hand, we need two flowers and then like numbers in two different suits. Even though the first block is green and the second block is red, we can decide what the suits those are. So the first block of ones could be dots. The second block could be bands. And then of course we have the last block of news. So just because the first block of, num of tiles there are green, does not mean that has to be the bamboo suit. Or the second block is red, therefore it needs to be the crack suit. That's not how it works. You decide which suit is represented for those two suits. Could be dots and cracks, it could be bams and dots, it could be dots and cracks. You decide based on what you have in your hand. The next example is two suits with a pung, a kong, and a pung and a kong, four numbers in a range. Next, we have a 369 example with dragons. This is a hand that some people refer to as knitted, where one number is followed by another number in a different suit, followed by a number that is the same suit as the first number, and then the matching dragon for the second number. So the first and third blocks are the same suit, and then the second suit and the corresponding dragon fill in the rest of the hand. That's called knitted. Finally, we have an example of a year hand where the Ys will be for any given year. So this year would be 2018 in two suits. You might have dots or bams for your 2018 year. The white dragon is the zero. And then of course we have news to fill in the rest of that hand. Finally, we have three colors means three suits. Three colors means three suits, and you decide what those suits are. If you look at the first example, we have flowers, then we have two pairs in one suit, then we have a Kong in a third su second suit and a Kong in a third suit. Three suits are represented, but you decide what those suits are. So for the first one, we have the color green. That does not mean that has to be bams. It could be cracks. The next color is red. Doesn't mean that has to be cracks. It could be dots. And then the third color, that could be whatever you decide. So just know that if you have three colors, you need to have three suits represented and you decide where those suits are. Could be cracks, bams, or dots, depending on the tiles you get in your hand. The next thing that you need to notice on the card that's very important is the parentheticals. Here is where you are given both flexibility and limitation for any given hand. So let's look at some examples. For the math play category, a lot of times there will not be any text because there's limited space. So anytime there's no parenthetical, you just build the hand as seen. So in this case, we need four flowers and then we need a Kong of twos, a Kong of eights, and a one and a zero in one suit. It is what it is. Build it as seen. Let's look at the next example. We need a pair of flowers. Then we need a year in one suit 
and then two dragons. Now, in this example, there are three colors, and normally that would mean three suits need to be represented. So you might think, okay, my year will be cracks, therefore my, flower, my dragons will need to be bams, and then my other dragon will need to be for the dots. So it would need to be a white dragon. So we would have cracks, bams, and dots represented normally. But if you read the parentheses, it says any one suit with any two dragon Kongs. So those dragons, even though they're in two different colors and they're even different colors than the year block, they could be any Kong of dragons. So that's giving us flexibility. In the next example, we have one, two, three in one suit, a Kong of fours in a second suit, and then a Kong of fives in a third suit. Three colors, three suits. In the parentheses, it says any three suits, and then any five con numbers. So that means any five consecutive numbers. Even though the example starts with a one, you can actually start that with a four and play the hand with four, five, six being the pairs, and then sevens being a Kong and eights being a Kong. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So the consecutive run category can start with any number as long as you end with nine. You cannot go back to one. There's no around the world with American Mahjong. The next example that we have here is another consecutive run category. We have two flowers, then we have two pairs in one suit, two pungs in a second suit, and then a pair of dragons in a third suit. The dragons correspond with the suits, so even though that particular suit is not here, it's represented by the dragon that corresponds. So let's say, for example, we have a 1-2 in BAMs, a 3-4 in cracks. That means we're going to need the dragon that corresponds with the dots because that's a suit that's missing. So we would need white dragons in this case. In the parentheses, it tells us you can use any four consecutive numbers. So that's going to give us flexibility. These numbers could be five, six, seven, eight, for example. In the next hand, we have dragons. We have three colors of dragons, red, green, and blue, and then a block of news. In the parentheses, it says the dragons can be any combination. So even though we have red Ds, you might think those are red dragons. We might have green Ds in the middle for the pair. You might think those would be the green dragons. And then we would have four dragons in blue, and you might think those would be the white dragons. But because of the parenthetical, you can have any dragon for these in any place. So for example, you could have a Kong of green dragons, a pair of red dragons, and then a Kong of white dragons. The, the colors don't tell you which dragon it needs to be. You get to decide what it is because it's clarified in the parenthetical. Dragons, any combination. The final example is with the 369 category. We have pairs of three, six, nine in one suit, one color, one suit there. Then we have two other colors. We have the green Kong of threes and a red Kong of threes. So we have three colors for this hand. That means three suits have to be represented. If you read the parentheses though, we have some flexibility here because even though Kongs of threes are displayed, they can actually be a three, a six, or a nine. So you can have either flexibility or limitation. The next thing that I want to show you is the X and the C. If you look next to the value of the hand, there's either an X or a C. X means open. And basically what that means is that if somebody discards a tile, you can claim it if you have the tiles to complete it. So for example, if we're playing the very first hand in the example, we need a Kong of threes, a Kong of sixes, and a Kong of nines, and then a pair of matching dragons in any one suit. 
if we have three three dots and someone discards a three dot, we can complete that block. So we would say, I want that tile. A lot of people say call and they will take the discard and add it to the three from their hand, expose it and make a Kong that's visible or exposed to the players at the table. Because there's an X by that hand, we're able to claim that discard to complete that block of tiles. That's called an open hand or an exposable hand. Any of these hands on the, the, the top ones, the very bottom one is concealed, but the top ones, those are all exposable. You can claim discards for any of those hands. The C means that the hand is concealed or closed. So you have to draw the entire hand yourself until it's ready to win. When it, the hand is ready to win and someone discards your winning tile, you can claim Mahjong and expose your hand at that point. When your hand is ready to win and it is a concealed hand, you do not have to pick your winning tile. You can claim Mahjong for a tile that is discarded and complete your hand. You can see also that concealed hands are higher in value. So keep that in mind. Typically, they're more difficult to complete, but well worth the effort. The next thing that I want to share with you is the value of the hand. The easiest hands are going to be the lowest value. So the value is related to the difficulty of the hand. 25 point hands for Amer um, National Mahjong League rules are usually the easiest hands. And you can see the consecutive run category, all but one are 25 points. So those are typically very easy or easy in comparison to other hands. The next value that you might see on a card would be 30 point hands. And a lot of times these are going to be hands that are concealed and typically they're gonna be on the bottom of the category. Or the other reason why you might see hands with a higher value is if there are more than two pairs in the hand. So in this case, you could see the last hand under this category it's concealed, so it's a 30 point hand. And then the two above that have three pairs in there. So those typically are gonna be a higher point hand because they're harder to get because of those pairs. The next value that you might see would be 40 and 45 point hands. And typically these are going to be quints. These are going to be harder to get because you need five of a kind, sometimes multiple five of kinds. And finally, we have 50 points or more. And you can see these are going to be your singles and pairs hands, which are hard to get. And then even the rarer hands, usually the last hand under the singles and pairs category, which will be a year hand, because it's going to have singles, which are hard to get. And that is typically gonna be the highest point valued hand on the card. The next thing that I wanna share with you are all the different kinds of cards that you can get. The National Mahjong League is the flagship. That is the most popular way to play American Mahjong in America. The National Mahjong League was established in 1937 and they started off using the conventions that are still used today uh, there are some things that have changed over the years, namely the number of flowers used, the number of jokers that are used. Uh, in, early, early on, they even, I believe, used chows. So over the years, it has changed, but the National Mahjong League rules has stabilized, I think, for quite a while. So the rules year to year are pretty stable. The next organization that has their own card that follows the National Mahjong League conventions is the American Mahjong Association. They have their own card. It's a three panel card with categories, colors, letters, and numbers that look very similar to the National Mahjong League. 
card, but the combinations are a little different. The next card is the Next Generation League. This card follows the National Mahjong League conventions, as does Marvelous Mahjong. Now, the American Mahjong Association and Marvelous Mahjong follow the Chinese lunar calendar. So they'll do, for example, the Year of the Dog, and they will have different themes based on the lunar calendar, which is a lot of fun. Finally, we have the Siamese Mahjong card. This is for the two-player game where each player plays two hands at one time. This was created by Gladys Grad of Mahjong Madness, and she has developed her own card for Siamese Mahjong in particular. There's also a version of Siamese Mahjong for four players. That's called Royal Siamese Mahjong, and her card has nuances that can apply to that style of play. The next thing that I want to cover are some resources that can help on your journey to master American Mahjong. Primarily, you want to go to the National Mahjong League and become a member. And I highly recommend that you buy your card from the league. If you want to support local uh, charities like your local synagogue or Hadassah chapter, feel free to purchase your card through them. You may or may not get it. Uh, at the same time as your friends who order their card from the National Mahjong League, but that is completely up to you. I buy my card from the National Mahjong League directly because I want that newsletter. Also, I want you to know about Sloperama. Tom Sloper is an avid Mahjong player. He's a connoisseur of Mahjong. He plays many styles and he's an expert. His website is a library chock full of information about Mahjong, not just American style. Any version you can imagine, he's got information on it. So if you want to know origins, the history of the game, uh, rule sets, frequently asked questions, debates, does tile design, anything you can think of, that has to do with Mahjong, you can probably find your answer on Sloperama. I also want to share some Facebook groups with you. There are many, but two primarily. Mine, Mahjong Central, I would love it if you would join, and also Mahjong That's It. This is a, the largest Mahjong Facebook group, and there are lots of great questions that are posed by beginners, and there's a great community of avid players uh, who are very helpful and there are many lively conversations there all about Mahjong. So consider joining Mahjong That's It. Also, I want to remind you that you could purchase Mahjong Made Easy from the National Mahjong League and this is their official guidebook. They're not calling it a rule book because it, it does kind of change over time and they do change their minds sometimes on some of their rules. So this is a guidebook that you should consider purchasing and keeping with your set so that if you ever have any kind of debate that comes up about rules, you can refer to the official guidebook published by the National Mahjong League. If you have any questions about anything I covered about the card, write it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer your question. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Be sure to click the bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.